This is the fourth note set on carbon compounds, the molecules of cells. This one is about proteins. Proteins are made of amino acids, and as we discussed earlier, there are two reasons monomers are called amino acids, because they have an amino group on one end of the molecule and a carboxyl or acid group on the other. There's also another part of the molecule, the R group, that's attached to that central carbon atom, as we see down here in the diagram. There are two general types of R groups that are called hydrophobic and hydrophilic. Hydrophobic groups are nonpolar, and hydrophilic groups are polar. So which ones do you think would be water soluble? Well, obviously, the hydrophilic ones. The hydrophobic ones are going to resist water. And so you see here the methyl groups that are on, the, on this, on leucine here, that are nonpolar um, functional groups, whereas the hydroxyl and the carboxyl groups are definitely water soluble groups. So these are hydrophilic serine and aspartic acid. The amino acids join together by dehydration synthesis to make a special bond called a peptide bond. The peptide bond forms in a similar way as the other types of bonds that we've seen between other monomers. But in amino acids, since those groups are on the ends of the molecules, the peptide bond forms between the amino group of one amino acid and a carboxyl group of another. Another name for proteins is polypeptides because they're joined, they're long chains of amino acids joined together by peptide bonds. So the polypeptide is an appropriate title for proteins. Here's an example of how protein bonds form. We have a carboxyl group of one amino acid over here on the left and the amino group of another amino acid on the right. The hydroxyl part of the carboxyl group will join together with the, one of the hydrogens on the amino group in a dehydration reaction to make water and connect the two amino acids together in this bond here forming what's called a dipeptide. Dipeptide because it's made of two amino acids joined by a peptide bond. The shape of a protein determines its function. So there are literally tens of thousands of different proteins in your body. They fall into several categories. Um, there are enzymes that speed up chemical reactions. There are proteins that are part of the structure, some of the structures of your body, your hair and nails, tendons and ligaments, things like that, connective tissue. There are contractile proteins, as such as those that are found in your muscles. There are defensive proteins, such as those that are found in your immune system. And there are signal proteins, like hormones. All of these various kinds, there are hundreds of different kinds of each one that are uh, used in various places in your body to do different jobs. The shapes of the proteins, are there are two general shapes. One shape is globular, which as you can imagine is kind of a glob, and the other shape is fibrous, or long and skinny fibers. Now the shape of a protein can be affected by heat, by pH, and other environmental factors. When these factors change the shape of the protein, this is called denaturation. And denaturation affects the function of the protein. It no longer functions properly. If you think about when you cook an egg, the egg white changes from a clear liquid substance to a white opaque um, solid. And that would be the denaturing of the proteins that are found there in the egg white. Now, when we talk about protein structure, there are four levels of protein structure. The primary structure is the sequence of amino acids in the chain. There are 20 different amino acids, and they can be joined together in any number of combinations in any number of different ways. If you change the sequence of the amino acids in the chain, this will usually cause changes in the shape of the protein, and that affects how the protein works. So the primary structure, the first part, the very important part is the order of the, uh, of the amino acids that are in the chain that's going to form the overall protein. The secondary structure is the coiling or folding of the chain due to hydrogen bonding. Now there are two main types of secondary structure. There's the alpha helix, which is kind of a coil, kind of like a, a telephone cord, and the beta pleated sheet. Uh, and it's uh, pleated like, uh, like you fold a piece of paper back and forth. Both of these form due to hydrogen bonding between hydrogen and oxygen groups of amino groups and carboxyl groups. And it has to do with what kinds of um, R groups are present 
in different places in the chain in the uh, overall chain that causes the, the coiling or the folding of the chain. This is what it looks like. We have here an amino acid. There are several amino acids here. It's just showing one at a time. And there are uh, hydrogen bonds forming in between the carboxyl and amino groups of various, um, of various amino acids as it coils around. The pleated sheet, similar thing happens. These line up in a different way and form hydrogen bonds uh, in a linear fashion called it causing the folding of the sheet like this. Now the fourth level of protein structure, I mean the third level, is the tertiary structure. This is the overall three-dimensional shape of the protein. The shape and the, third, the tertiary structure determines how the protein functions. Very many proteins have to fit together in a certain way in order to work properly. We'll talk more about how that happens as we go on through the course of the year and talk about different protein functions. Be, this uh, tertiary structure is because of or due to interactions between the various R groups on the amino acids. The interactions would be attractions between oppositely charged parts and repulsions of like charged parts. Oftentimes the hydrophobic groups will cluster on the interior of a protein that dissolves in water. That will keep them away from the water but still let them be a functional part of the protein molecule. Here we have a picture of, of a molecule called transthyretin. This is a polypeptide that has uh, many, many amino acids in the chain. And you can see the various structures. We have part of it that are, that are uh, in the helix shape, parts of it that are folded back and forth, many different parts that interact with each other in certain ways. Again, the hydrophobic uh, parts are probably toward the center whereas the hydrophilic parts are probably toward the outside so that if I can interact with, with water parts of the cell, uh, the cell um, cytoplasm in order to, um, to um, participate in the various chemical reactions that I need to participate in. The fourth level of structure is called the quaternary structure and it is an association between two or more subunits, two or more individual chains that are folded back and forth on each other in various ways and fit together. Some proteins are made of multiple identical subunits and others have subunits that are very different from each other. There are some of these proteins like hemoglobin that have non-protein parts like iron that's present in hemoglobin. Lots and lots of different combinations and all the thousands of different kinds of proteins that are found in your cells. Here's a picture of that transthyretin with um, four identical polypeptide chains that are stacked on top of each other in a particular way. The whole part here, the quaternary structure, is how the whole molecule functions. Now the unique three-dimensional shape determines how the protein functions. If the proteins are misfolded, it can cause diseases like mad cow disease or Alzheimer's disease. Uh, th there are a number of reasons why folding might be improper. It could be because of a mistake in the making of the protein, there might, might be a change in the amino acid sequence. Maybe it's because of a change in pH or temperature. There are also other kinds of changes in the environment which change the shape and those result in denaturation which causes improper functioning of the protein as a whole. This concludes the notes on proteins. Be sure to complete the form that's attached to this posting.